Being able to configure your mouse's DPI, the LEDs on your keyboard and PC is very important for gamers and PC enthusiasts, since as we all know, RGB gives you more FPS, right? The problem is that on Linux we often don't get official support from hardware vendors, which is a real bummer. But luckily the open source community has come up with a couple of solid alternatives that already support a lot of popular devices and are in many cases even easier to use than their proprietary counterparts. Let's get into it. I currently own two Logitech mice, the Qi Pro Wireless and the Qi 303 Shroud Edition, as well as this very old HyperX Pulsefire FPS. Which is… well, I don't even know why I like this, because its grip is just horrible. Back on Windows, configuring your mouse was not difficult at all. Google for a software, download it from the website and configure it. On Linux, however, we can't do that, since neither Logitech or HyperX offer an official version of their software. And no, you also can't get them to work in compatibility layers like Wine or Proton. To be honest, if you own a HyperX mouse, then you might as well just give up now or reverse engineer a driver, because I personally didn't find any way how you can configure it without a virtual or second physical Windows machine. However, with other mice brands, the story is quite different. I personally like to use Piper, a clean and easy to understand configuration app that writes changes directly to the onboard storage or individual profiles of your mouse. It utilizes a command line tool called RedBackD in the background, which supports a vast selection of Logitech mice, but also a growing number of other brands as well. Installing it is fairly easy, though I recommend you to select a distro native version if it's being offered, as the Flatpak version doesn't come with the set background service due to technical reasons. You can however install it via the terminal if you want. In the top left corner we can select our active profile or add more if the mouse supports several slots, configure the polling rate as well as the DPI by either adjusting the slider with our mouse or by pressing the plus or dash key. If your mouse also supports remapping buttons, Piper allows us to select each element and assign a vast number of operations, like automatic double-clicking, switching profiles, showing the battery level or even assign keyboard clicks. Piper can also be used to change the LED configuration if your mouse has some. Like in Logitech G-Hub, we get our typical mode settings where we can set the color, brightness, speed or turn them off to save power. Finally, we click apply and all our settings get written to the onboard mouse storage, which can now be used on any PC without any additional software. But what if you connect your mouse and it says this? Cannot find any devices. Please make sure your device is connected and supported. Well, before we move on to our next alternative, you should know that Piper, or more accurately, its background service RedBackD doesn't get official releases quite that often, which means that a mouse could be already supported, but it hasn't been officially released yet. My G303 Shroud Edition, for example, doesn't show up in Piper. However, the list of supported devices does indeed show it. If you discovered the same problem with your mouse as well, then what you want to do is to download the raw data file, open your file browser and copy it. Then we elevate our permissions by entering admin colon and paste it into root user share libred backd and it should now show up. Though sometimes if you're using a wireless mouse, you might need to connect it via cable since the dongle and the mouse itself have a different hardware address that isn't always in the config file. I really hope that official releases happen way more frequently in the future, since manually intervening with config files is for once tedious, not guaranteed to work on your devices, and Piper also doesn't come with images for them unless you want to go through the process and copy them manually as well. The last official release is more than one year old by the way. If you own a Logitech mouse and it still doesn't show up in Piper or you just don't want to go through the process of manually importing config files, then you can also try out Solar. Solar was my go-to to configure my G303 before I noticed that I could implement it in Piper, but it works a bit differently. For once I'm not aware that it can write the settings to the mouse's onboard storage, which might be annoying to some, since it means that it always has to run in the background. But at the same time, this is usually the default configuration setting on Windows as well, so yeah. What Solar is especially powerful at is that it doesn't just work with gaming mice, but also other Logitech peripherals like keyboards, headsets and other devices that use Logitech's proprietary protocol. On supported devices, you can even pair more than one device to a dongle, which can be quite useful on notebooks where you only have a limited number of USB ports. But then again, 
Solar only works for Logitech gear. If you have peripherals from Razer, then boy, the open source community has really put some effort in, since they managed to basically clone everything that the official configuration software offers and essentially support all devices, unless they are brand new maybe. Installing the OpenRacer software, however, can get a bit technical, especially if your distro fails to execute some commands. But on the most popular ones, you just need to add your user to the group like shown here, select the distro of your choice and follow the steps. You can neglect special versions if you don't use them, and a restart might be necessary once everything succeeded. Ok, so now we've covered Piper, which is able to configure Asus, Glorious, G-Skill, Logitech, Rocket, SteelSeries and a few more brands. Then Solar, which can live configure Logitech devices, and OpenRazor, which does so for Razer products. But what about that sweet RGB now? Keyboards, PC fans, graphics cards and even mainboard LEDs can be configured on Linux with an application called OpenRGB. And it supports a lot of devices. Simply by scrolling through the list on their website, we can get a pretty good impression. And yeah, if you're interested, it's also available on Windows and macOS as well. Now, like every application so far, when installing, try to install your distro's native version instead of Flatpak, since it again involves some setup. But besides that, it's really easy to use. Supported devices should already show up and you can start configuring straight away. I sadly don't really have much to configure, but it shouldn't be harder than any proprietary software. And this brings us to the end of this video. Now some of you might think that's quite a lot of effort and what's the deal with Flatback? So the first thing, Piper or more accurate, it's backend Ratback D. See it's progressing, but rarely sees official releases, which then get packaged into the repos of Linux distros. That is a real bummer, since it's basically the cleanest, easiest and fastest way to set up your mouse on Linux and save the configuration to your mouse as well. Ideally it should be install it, open it and start configuring. Works already great on older mice, but on newer ones you might need to add more config files. Open Razor is also another thing that's not quite as easy to install. While its setup instructions are not bad, if you don't know what kernel headers are and how to install them, it's back to chasing answers and packages. So there's definitely room for improvement there as well. And one more thing, what is going on with Flatpak? Shouldn't Flatpak include all necessary packages so that it can run on essentially any Linux distribution? Well yes, but when working with hardware and the kernel, then things become a lot more complicated. Flatpaks are not only sandboxed to limit breakage of applications, but also to provide better security. Since tools that configure hardware need to access resources very deep in the system, necessary packages and permissions are just not being provided for security reasons. This can be changed of course, especially the permission part, but the question is if that's really the right way to do it. It's a limitation for sure, but for small programs that really interact with your hardware, I also get it. And hey, there is usually an alternative sitting right there. And I really hope that now all of you are able to configure your peripherals on Linux. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and while you're down there, you should also subscribe and write a comment on how you typically reconfigure your peripherals on Linux. I'm curious what I might have missed. Thanks for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.